Sports. Texas Rangers baseball is presented by AT&T U-verse TV. Well, your Rangers have embarked on a Hugh City seven-game road trip. The first stop, Oreo Park in Canyon Yards, where tonight it's game number one between the Rangers and the Baltimore Orioles. And welcome in, everyone, along with Tom Green, Steve Busby. Glad you could join us on this Monday night of Rangers baseball. And it looks to be a, a good start to the road trip. Great weather here in Baltimore, and the Rangers trying to make the most of it. And tonight, they're going to have a matchup between the middle of the order, especially two guys hitting the middle of each order, and that would be Adrian Beltre and Adam Jones, and they are having a great month of June. They are buzzing. There are they're a lot of similarities between these two players. They're each an excellent defensive player. Adrian at third base, Adam Jones is a gold glove caliber center fielder. They both do that. Yep. They're both middle of the order hitters. Neither one of them walks very much. They're free swingers. Both of these guys are 300 hitters. Adam Jones has been very consistent the last couple of years. He's hit about 290, 30 home runs, knocked in 100. Adrian is going to hit around 300, hit 25 or 30 home runs, knock in 100 runs. Both of them have been very hot in June, hitting around 400. And it boils down, Buzz, to these are the key guys on each team that if you want to avoid in a key part of the game, these are the guys you want to try to avoid. I guess the one difference would be that uh, Adrian Beltre doesn't have quite as much around him because of injuries that, that Adam Jones does. But still, two guys uh, right in the middle of the order, right smack dab in the middle of a lot of offense for these two teams. So it'll be an interesting matchup as tonight and this series continue to, to roll on forward. Well, a matchup of a couple of veterans tonight. Saunders and Jimenez will have the starting lineup and the first pitch when we come back to Oriole Park at Canyon Yards right after this.
is brought to you by your Texas Ford dealer. Take the EcoBoost Challenge to see why Ford is the best in Texas. By AT&T U-verse TV. Find out what's possible with AT&T. Call 1-800-HIT-ATT. Mobilizing your world. And by Southwest Airlines. Find Southwest Airlines fares online only at southwest.com. Camden Yards to Oreo Park at Camden Yards. Beautiful setting for this four-game series coming up. Before we get things in, underway here tonight, let's head down to the field. Emily Jones is standing by him. Well, Buzz, as you guys mentioned, the official numerical second half of the season begins today, game number 82. But for most of the guys in the Rangers clubhouse, the second half is still a couple of weeks away. After the I'm sure after the, the break, uh, we will... As a team, we have to, you know, regroup and then just start over and then and, and just find a way to, you know, to win games. Don't, don't try to think too much or, or put too many stuff in our head. We have to do this or that. Uh, it's more simplified and, and just find a way to win. Uh, whatever, you know, whatever you can do every single inning to, to win that inning. So the Rangers trying to close out their version of the first half the season on a high note, then regroup, see where they're at, and adjust expectations, uh, goals, different things like that, beginning after the All-Star break, fellas. All right, thank you, Emily. Well, it's as uh, good a time as any, I suppose. You might get a head start on it now for the next uh, two weeks or so. The Rangers have until that uh, All-Star break coming up. Well, Yobaldo Amin is uh, out there on the mound now, and he is about ready to get things underway. Shinsu Chu will be stepping in. Amin is a 30-year-old right-hander from the Dominican Republic. He has had uh, kind of an enigma of a season. I will check out his Sonic scouting report. Not a good start after 16 starts. He's 2-8 and eight with an ERA of 470. He has not pitched well at home, to say the least. 0-6 with a 628 ERA. The O's haven't scored a lot for him. 245. It's kind of a bad combination. He gives up a lot of runs and they don't score many. Doesn't leave a whole lot of margin for error there. He's got good stuff. His biggest problem is throwing strikes. He leads the league in walks. That leads the major leagues in walks. And he has fallen behind here to Shinsu Chu. Two balls and no strikes. Chu leading off. He is playing left field tonight. 255 the average. Seeing uh, one for five in his career against Jimenez in the pitch. Going outside, three balls and no strikes. No Chu trying to start things off to get aboard in front of Elvis Andrews. He was trying to start this uh, road trip off on the right foot. Get that lead off man aboard and maybe score some early. Three and one now as Jimenez comes back with a strike. Rod Washington, Tim Bogart. Guys in charge of uh, running the ball club, but also the uh, developmental phase that we've talked about. Fouled away to the left, and the count goes full now, three and two. Rangers uh, President and General Manager John Daniels stating uh, last week that he's not giving up on the season by any means. He would still like to see his ball club compete, but the priority is developing the young players that they have. Call strike three, two. Caught looking. He was on his way to first, and no such luck. He is rung up. Four out number one. And that's laid up by Jeff Nelson bringing him up. Southwest Airlines brings you the Rangers batting lineup tonight. You saw Shin Su Chu strike out to strike things. Elvis Andrews is next in Carlos Pena. Adrian Belfry bats cleanup. Alex Rios is in right field. Leonis Martin in center. Robinson Torinos is catching, hitting seventh. Rubin Odor plays second. And batting ninth, the DH, Michael Choice. Oh, Jimenez falls behind 3-0, able to come back to get a 3-2 uh, pitch over to Shinsu Chu. Didn't really First look. Out. Let's see if it was a strike. Didn't look like one. Pitch tracker is not working tonight, so we'll have to make our own decision on that one. But let's put it this way. If it was a strike, it was a perfect strike. Borderline to say the least. Jimenez drops in a breaking ball to Elvis. One ball and one strike. Andrus, as you can see, a 268 hitter, a couple of home runs, and 19 RBI. And then his misses outside. It's now two and one. Elvis, 
now for the last month or so has been pretty consistently between 265 and 275. It hasn't uh, varied a whole lot. Lines one to right field. That is in in front of Mark Akis, a base hit. And Elvis picks up right where he left off at home. And smacks a one-out single to right field. Take a look at the Oriole defense uh, brought to you by Progressive tonight. You saw Mark Akis in right. He is joined by Adam Jones in center. And uh, Nelson Cruz is in left field. Steve Pierce at first. Scope and Hardy are up the middle. Davis at third. Chris Davis getting the start at third base tonight. And Caleb Joseph is behind the plate. Chris Davis, Davis uh, moving across to Diamond. You'll remember when he first came up with the Rangers, he was really a third baseman by trade. The Rangers converted him to a first baseman. But Chris back over at, uh, at his roots at third with Manny Machado. Uh, on the suspended list. He was suspended five games by Major League Baseball for tossing his bat. Uh, he's not going to be available for this uh, entire series, and I don't think you, know, you have too many Rangers crying about that. They won't be a feel too sorry for him. No, he's a good player, and he's a very good defensive player, too. When he, Chris Davis filled in at third base as a Ranger, he did a good job over mm -hmm. there. He's got a strong arm, and he didn't cause you to have any concern about him defensively there. So he'll fill in and do a good job. But Manny Machado's a terrific defensive player. Starting to come out a little bit as an offensive player this year too. This is what caused Manny Machado to get suspended. At a at a play where uh, over at third he kind of uh, was upset about the tag that Josh Donaldson put on him and went nose to nose and then you know he should get suspended. Yeah. He ought to get suspended for just being stupid. I mean, yeah, that's else. ridiculous. Didn't hurt anybody. You know, he's a young player. He's immature. He's got a lot to learn. And I have a feeling there's some veteran players on the Oriole team who probably had a few words with him. And yeah. He can appeal the suspension because I guess if it's not upheld or if it's reduced, it helps the ball club a little bit. But as far as sucking it up and taking the suspension for that, that's about probably the best thing to do. Put it behind you. Forget about it. Try to learn from your childish mistake. Yeah, he did appeal it to uh, Joe Torrey, and Torrey kind of laughed. Yeah, I said I no. Would have, I would have laughed too. Oh, you <laughs> want to appeal it? Waste my time? <laughs> it's six days instead of five. You know, they just left it at five. But <laughs> uh. here's Carlos Pena as uh, Amena is going to work on Elvis at first base. I, I saw the tag that Donaldson put on him and. I mean, it didn't even look like an overly aggressive no. tag. You know, sure just did. trying to make the tag. And then to throw the bat at the guy? Come on. There goes Elvis. The pitch is low. The throw to second is one hop. They got him. Nice pickup by Hardy. As Caleb Joseph threw a one hop strike right on the bag at second. He threw a one hopper and. You see why J.J. Hardy's a gold glove shortstop. This is a beautiful play. It's hard to catch a short hop, but it's hard to catch it and then slap it down and make a tag. Usually when an infielder catches that ball, his glove is coming up. Hardy had his glove kind of above the ball and caught it with his glove coming down to make the tag. And that's just a play you don't see very often. That was great glove work by J.J. Hardy. Sure was. No, that erases the one-out single. And now the pitch to Carlos Pena couldn't check his swing, and it's three and two now. But Pena trying to keep his first inning alive. He gets aboard. Adrian Beltre is swinging about in the on-deck circle. Just underway, a beautiful evening here in Baltimore. Payoff pitch on the way. Pena lost the fly ball to left field. He hit pretty well, but Cruz. We'll stop short of the warning track. Makes the grab. That will do it. Well, the Rangers gone in the first. No runs are hit. Nobody left after a half. Any Rangers, nothing. Orioles coming up.
The Orioles come to bat against Joe Saunders. And here's their lineup that will face the Ranger left-handed. Nick Marquez, the right fielder, leads off. Steve Pierce is next. Nelson Cruz in left field bats third. Adam Jones, the cleanup man, plays center. Chris Davis at third base. Delman Young is the DH. He's currently on a real hot streak. J.J. Hardy back seventh, plays short. Jonathan Scoop is at uh, second base. Scope, excuse me, is at second base. And Caleb Joseph, the catcher, bats ninth. And pitching for the Rangers is Joe Saunders. We'll look at our Sonic scouting report. He's had seven starts this year, looking for his first win. ERA a little bit above five. He had a start early in June against Baltimore. It was a no decision. Gave up ten hits in six innings, but only a couple of runs. He's pitched very well in ten career starts against the Orioles. He's seven and zero. Oh. Most wins without a loss versus the O's of all time. So hopefully, hopefully he'll be able to continue that nice streak he has going against the Orioles. The Rangers will play well on the road and. The Orioles will play poorly at home. The Rangers would love to see Joe Saunders get his first win in a Ranger uniform here tonight. Uh, maybe be a little payback for a couple of years ago in Arlington. That last game. That uh, play in game, if you will. Yeah, he pitched that. Uh, getting credit. He pitched a big game yeah. that day against the Rangers. I was feeling pretty good about the Rangers' chances before that game started. First pitch to Nick Markakis spins him around. And we are underway in the bottom half of the first. With a uh, little high, how are you? Marquecas, a 298 hitter. Seven home runs, 29 driven in. And Saunders comes back with a strike to even the count. Marquecas, uh, in his career, a lot of matchups against uh, Joe Saunders. Nine for 32. Comes out to a 281 average. The 1 1 pitch. Went right down at his feet. And the count moves to a ball and two strikes. Orioles come into play tonight, a game and a half behind the uh, division leading Toronto Blue Jays in the American League East. Are 42 and 39. As Tom told you, Buck Joe Walters Club, two games under 500 at home. They're only one of uh, one of only three teams that have uh, an above 500 record overall. At least three games over 500, and they are under 500 at home. What else uh, is the reverse of that? Joe Walters Club to try to figure out a way to win here in the friendly confines. Another ground ball foul off the front foot of Nick Marquez. He is wearing that right foot out. In the pregame show, we showed highlights from the series in in Texas. The Marquez hit a couple of home runs against the Rangers. And both pitches were from right hand pitchers. Both pitches were middle of the plate, inside, and up. And those were two balls he hit to right field. And Joe's done a pretty good job of keeping the ball down. That one was tailing in, away from the spot that he hit the home runs with. Marquez is able to take that pitch and run the count full. So Marquez leading off, trying to get a board. Steve Pierce, the first baseman, will be next in the order. Saunders to the wide, the payoff pitch. Off the fist and pulled foul down the first base side. Well, he's swinging a pitch that wasn't even close to uh -huh. being a strike right there. Marquez's first four or five years in the big leagues, this guy that did walk quite a bit. And that was a pitch I would never have expected to see him yeah. swing at, to be honest with you. Yeah, you're right. I think he was just anticipating a strike and was geared up to swing at it, no matter where it was going to be. Okay, that pitch up and Marquez takes that one and draws the leadoff walk. Well, one on, nobody on. Steve Pierce coming up. Let's take a look at the Ranger defense. It's delivered to you tonight by Demontron RB. Well, the outfield this evening, uh, Chu in left, Martin in center, Rios is in right. Carlos Mania at first. Odor and Andrews up the middle, Beltre at third. And Robinson Torino's catching. Good hit Odor, you see the fourth among American League rookies. At 981 in fielding percentage. A one on, nobody out here. Steve Pierce, who is hitting 324, he takes a Saunders fastball for strike one. Yeah, Pierce is having a nice season. He's 30 years old. He's played most of his career with the Pirates. He's also played a little bit with the Astros. And he's on track to have the most at bats in any given major league season that he's ever had. And he's earning them. He's playing well. 
Rebounds this one to left field. The ballpark will not hold that one. And Pierce is in his eighth home run of the year. A two-run blast. The Orioles on top. Two to nothing. Out about that one as soon as he swung the back that ball was going. The second might go in Juan Gonzalez territory in the second deck. Pretty much short of that, but it had plenty of distance to it. Lead off walk. Trying to throw this ball down and away. It's up and in. And when you miss the target diagonally by that much, bad things can happen. And that's a bad thing if you're a Ranger fan. That's the fifth home run that Joe Saunders has allowed this year. He's facing Nelly Cruz, and Cruz has taken Saunders deep a couple of times before. He takes low and in. And the count evens at a ball and a strike. Nelson hitting at 284 this year, 25 home runs. That's tied for the best in the major leagues. 66 RBIs, which leads the major leagues. Change up floats outside. Count goes to two and one. Well, Cruz, do you remember the offseason saga? Turned down the uh, qualifying offer from the Rangers, expecting to get a, a multi year uh, contract offer, and uh, did not. Came back and finally signed with the, uh, with the Orioles. And, uh, boy, since. Chris Davis set the record last year with three All-Star game home runs. Cruz trying to uh, catch him this year. Rounds out the short. And that is the first out here in the first half. Number seven. Out. Oh, good pitch right there. He threw him a sinker, kept it down, got the ground ball. That's kind of the name of the game. And Joe goes about his business. That's what he's trying to do. Keep the ball down. Keep it away from the spot that Steve Pierce got to make contact with it. Up and out over the plate spot. One out. Here's Adam Jones hitting a 301. He like uh, a couple of his Oriole teammates have had good success against Joe Saunders. 318 career wise. First pitch is low and inside for ball one. Well, Jones is coming off two really consistent years. 287, 285. Right around 32, 33 home runs, 100 RBIs. Plays very nice defensive, defensively in center field. Gold glove caliber center field. He's got a strong throwing arm. He's a good runner. Sometimes we overuse the five tool label for a player, but. He is definitely a guy that can do all five of those things you talked about. Play defense, throw, run, get for average. Good, solid, everyday player, all-star player. One Shot. thing he doesn't do, Buzz, is walk. No, he, he, he only walk nine times, so he's never going to be a big on-base percentage guy unless he hits for a very high average. And so you watch him play, and you just say, to yourself, the pitcher really should never give him, on purpose anyway, a good pitch to hit because yeah. he's probably going to expand the zone in almost every at bat. But some guys have the knack of doing that, <laughs> swinging pitches out of the strike zone and still making good contact. And Adrian Belfry, you mentioned the comparison uh, before the ball, he's lost that. Sure. Yeah. Now he can expand the strike zone and still do some damage. Pudge was like that. Yeah. And the ultimate. Rangers had the pleasure of having him for a couple of years. He was playing in Guerrero. Right. 2 2 pitch. Come back and try it again. Guerrero, and I mean this in the nicest sense of the world, was a freak. Not many, not many folks could do what he did with a baseball bat. Uh, if an average player swung at the same pitches that Vladimir Guerrero swung at, he wouldn't last in the big leagues for a couple of months because he'd hit about 080 and be yeah. gone. He just couldn't make it couldn't make it work. He just had uncanny strength, power, and the ability to make that hand eye coordination, make that kind of contact. Well, and slicing one down the right side. That's gonna drop untouched in foul territory and bounce into the seats. We'll come back and try the two-two pitch again. That 
uh, uh, four or five feet foul uh, midway between the line and the uh, seats down there when it bounced. But well, John's back there, 14 home runs. He has driven in 48 this year. That was pretty, the order, uh, pretty good with Cruz and Jones and Chris Davis, all 41 or more RBI already. That's for sure. Another looper down the right side. This will be back in the seats. So already in this at bat, you've seen him swing at a slider down and in, well off the plate, and foul it down the third baseline. That was a pitch sinking down and away, not a strike. But he made some contact and fouled it off. It's kind of hanging in there. The numbers he's had at this stage of the season will pretty much add up to exactly what he's done the last couple of years 30 home runs, 100 knocked in, and it's somewhere between 285 and 290, probably. And this one pounded the left field. That is way back and gone. Adam Jones with his 15th home run of the year. The Orioles lead 3 0. Uh, pretty much in that, if that does, it's a good example of exactly what we were talking about. A guy that he will expand the zone. He fouled off a couple of pitches well out of the strike zone, but he fouled them off. He didn't put them in play. If he put them in play, they wouldn't have gone anywhere. So he fouled them off, hung in there, and then late in the at bat, he gets a pitch that stays in the strike zone. Not a perfect pitch to hit, but it's in his zone, that's for sure, down and in. Keeps it fair and launches it. The first pitch to Chris Davis is on the outside corner for strike one. See that slider spin on it. And it uh, kind of spun right into the middle of the bat. And just barely fair. Kind of hugging the foul pole down the left field line. Well, Joe Saunders having a rocky first inning. He's given up three, a couple of home runs. Chris Davis is ripping a miss. That was the 25th pitch of this first inning. Adam Jones down with 15 home runs, 49 RBI. Back to Davis comes Saunders. A rip and a miss. And the strikeout. Two gone here in the first, and Gelman Young coming in. The tough first half for Chris, a year after hitting 53 home runs and knocking in 138. Finding his average down around 210 right now. Definitely befuddled by those last two curveballs. I would imagine you've seen a few more pitches in that same area this year than last. Yeah, I would think so. Gelman Young. Why you didn't see him last year, too? No, I, I agree with you. Well, when Young fouling it off, yeah, part of it, too, what you think, Tom, is that uh, Chris Davis coming into a lineup that already had Adam Jones and uh, some guys have hit the ball out of the ballpark, and people tended to think, well, we're not going to pitch around him because of the other guys. That could be. That could be, and that's one of the benefits of hitting in a very good lineup. Now, this year, J.J. Hardy only has one home run, but he's averaged 25 home runs the last three years, so he's another guy that provided that kind of power. Young gets a chopper out to Odor, and that will do it. But the Orioles pound two up out of the yard. Three hit, three runs. We'll go to the second. Three nothing.
baseball's best getter in Minnesota. And Derek Jeter takes the field in his last All-Star game of his great career. And it promises to be a very emotional and unforgettable night. Special coverage starts at 4.30 that afternoon on Fox Sports 1, followed by the 2014 All-Star game at 7.30 on Fox. Other events going on the day before on Monday the 14th, the Home Run Derby, 8 p.m. that night on ESPN. And on Tuesday at 7.30 on Fox is the big show, the 2014 Major League All-Star game. Adrian Beltre starting things off here in the Rangers second. 3-0 Baltimore after a first inning explosion against Joe Saunders. Beltre takes the pitch low. It's two balls and no strikes. Adrian Heaton at 332. That is second best in the American League to Jose Altuve. Shot for foul. Colin, I know you and I were talking about Altuve yesterday and kind of uh, wondering at the uh, in amazement at how well he's been hitting. He got three more hits yesterday afternoon. Yeah, you know, if you look at Altuve, if he was playing on a good team, he'd be an MVP candidate. Yeah, what he's doing right now. He he became the first guy in almost a hundred years to have multiple have games, four games in a row with multiple hits and multiple stolen bases. Wow. And Ray Chapman did it back in 19 oh something. Uh huh. And no one has done it since. Multiple hits, multiple stolen bases in four straight games. Chris Davis to the back end, up and throw. Throw is right on the money. This is out number one. And it will bring up Alex Rio. Now, the updated uh, balloting in the American League Jose Bautista, Mike Trout, and uh, Joanna Cespedes in the outfield now are the leaders. Miguel Cabrera, the runaway leader at first. Cano and Jeter up the middle, teammates for a long time. And in New York, Josh Donaldson still leading in third. Matt Wieters uh, catching, but uh, apparently Derek Norris, the ace catcher, is. Gaining ground very quickly. Of course, Matt Wieters out having had uh, Tommy John surgery just a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, the, the place where there's a lot of good players, if you had to pick one position in the American League, it'd be second base. Yeah. You've got Cano leading. Altuve is having the best year. He's leading the league in hitting. Ian Kinsler's having an excellent year. You just saw the Twins and Brian Dozier is leading the league in Major League Baseball, leading the league in runs scored, and right at, right at the top almost in Major League Baseball. 15 home runs, 15 stolen bases. He's having a good year. Dustin Pedroia. And then other guys that aren't necessarily having all-star years, but they look at Kipnis and Kendrick for the Indians and the Angels. There's a lot of good second basemen in the league. Maybe more so than any other position. Put the outside to Alex Rios. The count is even now at two and two. Alex hitting 304. He snapped that 0 for 17 yesterday with a base hit. Just does get a piece of that. And then his fastball. The men is will throw a couple of different kinds of fastballs. They'll throw that two seamer, which Rios got there and just fouled off. And also throw a four seamer, which is straight or maybe has a little cutting action. He will cut the ball and uh, make it run away from a right hand. Couldn't check the swing. That pitch going down and away. And the Menes gets his second strikeout. Two gone for Leonis Martin. It's a 93 mile an hour sinker, it looks like, that definitely fooled Alex. And I, I would think that he'd be a tough guy to hit against with all the arms and legs flying. Buzz, I'm not a pitching technician like you, but. <laughs> the first time that you ever saw Abaldo Jimenez, Jimenez, would would you say that his mechanics might be a problem for yeah, him at times? I, yeah, I, I don't think I'd want to try and throw that way. And I, I certainly wouldn't try and teach a youngster to throw that way, but it works for him. That seems to work. And he is it's kind of like hitting, I guess. You know, you look at some guy and say, there's no way he can hit the ball doing that. Well, it does work for him. I guess there are times where it all comes together for him. Right. But then there are times when he's out of whack where it really, it really isn't working on a consistent basis. Adam Jones in and over to his right. Makes the grab. And Jimenez sends the Rangers down in order. We finish one and a half in Baltimore. Orioles three. Rangers nothing.
all thanks to the good folks at AT&T. And that would be a great picture right there. Just use hashtag Southwest Fan Photo. Your photo might be selected to be aired during one of our broadcasts this year. We'll have the uh, selection for tonight a little bit later on. Maybe I should have a great time on the front row right there on top of the dugout watching the game. Barbers are starving. Bottom of the second inning. And uh, J.J. Hardy starts things off for the Orioles. The bottom third of their order to face Joe Saunders. Left-hander deals strike one. Hardy, as Tom told you, uh, struggling a bit in the power department, but hitting 290. The last time we saw him in Texas, he hadn't hit a home run. He's hit his first home run since then. That was his first home run in 339 at-bats. That's a guy that the last three years has averaged 25 home runs a year, so that is a huge power drop. Well, there's number two. Deep to left center field and gone. J.J. Hardy makes it a four to nothing. Baltimore lead. Somebody that looked like the opposite of Jinx right there. He hadn't been showing much power, but he gets a pretty good pitch to hit right there. A fastball near the center of the plate. And he may not have been hitting for a lot of power so far this year, but he showed it right there. That's how he hit 25 home runs the last three years. A short, strong stroke by J.J. Hardy. Jonathan Scope up there. He takes a pitch inside. And the count moves to two balls and no strikes. Scope, the young second baseman, hitting at 218. Six home runs, 21 RBI. Pitch down low. It's three balls, no strikes. And Joe Saunders trying to avoid what happened to him last time out. That was against the Detroit. And he gave up three runs in the first. He gave up two more in the third inning. Today he's giving up one more in the second, along with three in the first. And it's uh, been kind of a rough stretch for the veteran left hand. Three and one to scope. Saunders back to the plate. Right down the third baseline. That one veers off into foul territory. We'll come back and try it on three and two. Orioles now, as a team, have 99 home runs this year. Second in the American League. And in this ballpark, particularly, it's hard to believe that an Oriole club with this kind of power would have trouble winning here at the ball at this park because it's really conducive to the home run. But they are. Must they're, be they're they're sure. Sure. Too. Must be. Still pops it up on the right side. It's Odor backing up behind Carlos Peña and. Rookhead makes the grab. That is out number one. And bring up the catcher, Caleb Joseph. Joseph, who came up in early May, I think his uh, inaugural major league foray. That was when uh, Matt Wieters went on the disabled list. And Wieters, as you mentioned, a month later had to go undergo Tommy John surgery. Ailing elbow. Oh. And Nick Huntley uh, divvying up the catching chores. All teams suffer their injuries. And some of the players you can afford to lose more than others, but for the Orioles, Matt Readers was a guy that they could ill afford to lose. He was a key guy. He was an all star caliber catcher, kind of a rock behind the plate. He was having one of his better offensive years this year as well. Mm -hmm. That was a huge loss for him. Two balls and a strike. The count to Joseph. Saunders reading the signs and back to the plate. He hit the center field. And there's the first non home run hit by the Orioles tonight. Uh, four hits in the first nine hitters, four hits, and they walk. He's four to nothing. Now back to the top of the order. More Nick Barkakis. 
pitch was down and away. Joseph stayed with it, lined it fairly well on the right center field. And a pitch that I think you, if you're Joe Saunders anyway, hope you could throw it down there and get a ground ball at somebody. But Joseph was able to elevate it and line it into center field. Uneasy, I think you'd say, on the Ranger bench. He won't show it outwardly, but he has to be a little uneasy on the inside. Trying to navigate through the early part of this ball game. Hope Joe can settle down and give him five or six innings today. Gekas takes the breaking ball that's off the plate. Outside, it's one ball and no strikes. Scott Baker's the long man, but he essentially had a start three days ago. Yeah, the Rangers uh, with that seven-man bullpen, not the not the eight they had. Off and on earlier in the year. So maybe not a man short, but as far as rest there. 1 0 pitch. It's a knee high strike. Saunders already haven't used 44 pitches, and it just has one out here in the second inning. Left hander, a check of first. This is outside, two and one. And, uh, very select percentage against the ring. But Nick Martin is being fifth. And you wouldn't think of him necessarily as being on that list, but uh, he's right up there with Ortiz and Giambi and Beltran. You get Jeter and Marte because a couple of leadoff guys. And that pitch catches the outside corner knee high. Two and two now. Yeah, if you go back to the three years between 2007 and 2009, Marquecas averaged 300 with 20 home runs and 100 RBIs. Last couple of years, it's been a different kind of a player, more of a leadoff type player, but he's only averaged 12 home runs and 56 RBIs the last couple of years. And that pitch low and away. Count is full once again. Marquecas walked. On a full count in the first, and he has the same kind of count here against Saunders. Arcade is to be followed by the first baseman, Steve Pierce. Caleb Joseph, the catcher at first. Saunders comes set. The payoff pitch. Up the middle. And it goes off Elvis' glove in the center field. Joseph continuing on to third. What looked like was maybe going to be an inning ending double play turns into a first and third situation and one out. At that point in time, before Marquecas hit that ball, you're thinking, boy, the one thing Joe could use right here is a nice little brown ball, get a double play, get out of this inning, get back in the dugout, and try to keep your pitch count down a little bit. Elvis, I think, is anticipating catching that ball and somehow flipping it back toward O'Dor. But never came up with the ball. Fanned on the ball. Well, that's going to be an error on Elvis Andrews. And that's uh, a snap a streak for Andrews. Significant length without an error. He just flat missed it. Like he might have been getting ready to uh, shovel it to Odor to start a double play. He's probably thinking, can I get to the bag and tag it myself? Am I going to have to flip it? And right at the end, after he made his decision, he just did, wasn't able to come up with the ball. That's Elvis's first error in the last 42 games, and just his second in the last 52. The runners at first and third. Here's Steve Pierce, who had a two run bomb in the first. How's that straight back? There's nothing in the run. Well, Ten years ago, Chuck Thompson would have said, "Give that fan a contract." <laughs> yes, he would have. Made a nice play there with his glove. Well, Pierce with that first inning home run, now eight home runs and 24, 23 RBI. Bounces it away down the right side. The count goes to nothing and two. If you add up Steve Pierce's major league time and statistics coming into the season, he had. 743 at bats. He was a 238 hitter. He had a total of 17 home runs in his career. So he's doing a nice job for the Orioles. He's hit his eighth home run already. 
and when the season's over, he'll probably have double the most at bats he's ever had in the season. We'll take you back to that first inning. Pitch to Steve Pierce. That's another one that Joe missed where he intended to throw the ball. That was a long home run to left field. High, long, a lot of hang time on that one. One ball, two strikes. The pitch just off the inside corner to even the count now at two and two. Just by much. Saunders again ready. A check of the runners. And Pierce skies one to shallow center. Leonis Martin coming on. Nobody tagging on this one. Makes the grab and both runners stay put. Going important out as Pierce pops out. Now Nelson Cruz comes out. And trying to dodge the bullet. Missed the opportunity for a double play. Might only have been a force out. Not an opportunity maybe. Made the error and now you have to get two more outs. There's one of them. One of the toughest outs in the league is Nelly Cruz. First tied for first in the major leagues in home runs and leading the major leagues with 66 runs batted in. Hit 12 home runs in May. Jose Abreu is right there with him. Cruz a ground ball to short his first time against Saunders. A little late on that fastball and slices it foul. Nothing in one. Go to the list for the Orioles of uh, home runs before the All-Star break. Chris Davis, the most set last year at uh, 37. This is the in the franchise history here in Baltimore. It goes back to 1954. Frank Robinson on that list. 1960, or I should say, uh, 66. Yeah. One and one to Cruz. Joseph, the runner at third. Marcakis at first. There's Joseph, the catcher over there. Getting his lead from third. Now the one one. One and two. <laughs> Orioles out to an early four nothing lead. They have not hit the Rangers four to one. That's the uh, big stat is uh, three home runs that they've hit. Two run blast, a pair of solo home runs. And Washington figure out a way to get the uh, or Saunders off the mound with no further damage done. Pitch number 57 for Saunders. Odor underhands to Andrews covering the force play ends the inning. See right there, that's just the Orioles limited to one run on two hits and an error. They strand two. Four nothing, Baltimore.
Pennsylvania. Rangers president and ambassador Tom Schieffer at the Dr. Pepper Texas Rangers Hall of Fame luncheon. It's coming up on August 22nd at the Arlington Convention Center. You can hear his stories about the construction of Globe Life Park and behind-the-scenes stories from his years with the Rangers. To purchase tickets, visit TexasRangers.com slash Hall of Fame. Top of the third inning, Rangers trailing by four. And uh, Robinson Chirinos will start things off against Ubaldo Jimenez. One ball, no strikes. Chirinos now hitting a 247 after a three for three game yesterday. Seven home runs, 23 driven. That is missing inside, two balls, no strikes. The uh, three-hit game, first time uh, in about four years that a Ranger catcher has had at least three hits in the game, and have that be each at bat that he had. Three or more hits. That certainly tied uh, Robinson's career high also. Down the middle, three balls and one strike. Jimenez back to the plate. Yeah, line drive right center field. That is plugged the alley. Going over to cut it off is Jones. Going for two. The throw. He is out at second base. Doritos trying to make something happen for the Rangers is gunned down. And Ron Washington is going to head out to second base. As uh, Joey Probinski up in the replay room looks at the... Uh, video of what just happened at second. See if there's a case for an appeal or not. Well, that, that was a good effort by Robinson. I watched him out of the batter's box and he hustled all the way. And it's another example of what we're talking about with Adam Jones in center field. He's a terrific defensive player. He has a strong and accurate arm and he makes a great play. Whether or not they're going to get the call replay will decide. But it doesn't take anything away from the play that Adam Jones just made and it's another good at bat for Robinson Chirinos, who lined the ball into right center and hustled all the way and may end up with a double. We'll see. Yeah, Ron Washington talking to uh, Jeff Nelson, the home plate umpire, and Crucci. He is uh, summoning Kobe Bassner. Yeah. Yeah, base hit if it turns out to be a base hit or put Robinson right up above 250. A nice little streak right now. Playing some great baseball. Talk and rave about the way he has handled the pitching staff and thrown runners out at a 40 per 46 percent clip. He's also swinging the bat pretty well right now. He's telling J.J. Hardy out there that he had his foot on the bag before the tag was put on, but J.J. Hardy has nothing to do with the appeal. <laughs> kind of a waste of breath. No plate up by Jeff Nelson. And uh, Toby Baxter, the second base umpire, the guys with the headsets on, talking to Replay Command Center in New York. Oh, that is close. Yep. And again, it's got to be clear and convincing evidence to overturn that call. And the question is, when wow. the foot made contact, was the glove of the tag applied or not? And pretty tough with uh, the two angles we've seen to determine exactly when that happened. I, th I think he's safe. But I don't know if it'll get overturned. I, I think he got his foot in there. Yeah, I, I do too. But I, I'm yeah, kind of I, with you there yeah, too. I'm not sure it's going to get overturned. If, is that clear and convincing evidence? I don't know. Well, I've had the opportunity to watch all these replays about five or six times every time, and I'm hitting less than 500 on my <laughs> on my guesses. <laughs> Safe. All right. There you go. Well, the call is overturned. Finally got one. Well, credit Robinson Torinos with a leadoff double here in the third inning. And kudos to uh, Joey Probinski and Tim Bogar, the uh, guys that relayed the information to Ron Washington as to whether to uh, challenge the calls or not. I don't know what in the world Buck Showalter's talking to. Uh, Jeff Nelson about. Yeah, I don't think he'd get this kind of a conversation if he was arguing the result of no. the call. There must be other some other technicality that 
Buck is reading into the play. Getting a long explanation though from Jeff Nelson, the home plate umpire, so it must have been somewhat of an intriguing question. Well, I think I, I think what happened was that when Juan Washington went out and talked to the second base umpire and came back toward home plate and then talked to Jeff Nelson, who's some of the second base umpire in, I think Buck Showalter is saying, look, the appeal has to be made to the guy who made the call, which would be Toby, Toby Basser, the uh, second base umpire. Okay. And I don't know if that negates your, if that ends your ability to make the challenge or not. But uh, Jeff Nelson relaying the information he got from Basser. Buck Showalter uh, has the information. Now, Ron Washington is going to get a chance to uh, hear it from Jeff Nelson. That's one of the little quirks of, uh, of the replay system is that there have to be specifications when you can and can't challenge as far as the time gone by and kind of how the procedure has to, has to be followed. I'm not sure, Tom, that that was one we were getting the explanation. I'm not sure that was one of the one of the uh, parameters that we yeah, were I've, told about. Yeah, I'm sitting here trying to figure it out myself. But what you just said makes sense. Both managers got a good explanation. They seem satisfied with it. And from a Ranger perspective, Robinson's still in second base. So there you go. We're not going to argue. Nope. No, nope, not at all. So the leadoff double puts uh, Torinos in scoring position now. Rubenet Odor. Your second baseman will step in. Odora, 269 hitter with three home runs, 17 driven in. And he slices one down the left field line, but that is going to slice back into the second row. Out of play, it is nothing in one. In this kind of a situation, if you're Odor and you're going to go up there and swing the first pitch, you've got to be able to pull it, don't you? Yeah, yeah, you know, it's, I guess you could sit, hit one on a line the other way. I think for a young hitter, though, going up and hitting the first fastball that you see off a pitcher that you haven't seen a lot of is is probably not the wisest way to go about it. I know Ted Williams would say it's not the wisest way to go about it. And if you're trying to move the runner over, you need to get a pitch. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I was I wasn't even paying any attention to the man at second. Yes, it definitely was. I agree with that. One ball and one strike. I mean, it's a check of second. I think that's probably going up there without a plan in the back of your mind. Uh -huh. And that's one of the things that Wash wants to develop with the young players is not just their physical skills on the, on the baseball field, but also the way they approach the game mentally. You're exactly right. If you go up there in that situation, your job is to get the runner over. You get it that time. And then his cousin gets the other hand flip and pierce. It goes 3 1 and uh, Torino's on the third. He's there with one out now for Michael Choice. Let's take time here for a Mazda game break with Dana Larson. Dana? Dana, thank you. Oh, the Rays uh, turning on the power all of a sudden. Blasted the Orioles here yesterday, 12 to 7. You had five home runs in that ball game. We're get, you're getting back to the first ball fastball hitting. There's been several times this year where Rubnet went up and swung at the first fastball and was a little bit late on it, and popped it up and, and, and made it out. And you know that to me is just going up there without without really a plan in the back of your mind how you're going to approach that hitter. Well, you don't have to necessarily go up there and take a pitch, but if you're going to swing at a fastball, you don't want to be late. And in that situation, for sure, Buzz, with a man on second and nobody out, your plan has to be to try to pull it back. So, you know, you line one foul down the third baseline, it's probably going up there without a plan. Michael Choice up there with a kind of one ball and one strike. Maybe the situation yesterday that Michael Choice had. Couldn't uh, put the ball in play. He had runners at the corners early with nobody out in the second inning of yesterday's game. He struck out, so he's up there trying to trying to have a plan of putting the ball in play anywhere in the middle of the diamond. Past the pitcher would get Chirinos home from third. The infield is back for Baltimore. Jimenez to the plate. 
and the other the other side of it is buzz for a, a young player. You can talk to the coaches and you can walk up there with a perfect plan, but still you may not have developed the skills yet yeah. to execute that plan. Right. It, there's kind of a double edged sword. Have a plan, but then still have the experience and the skill to be able to execute that plan. It's not that easy. You've got a pitcher out there that knows what you're trying to do and he's trying to keep you from doing sure. it. Sure. That's why you can take the best hitters in baseball and they're not 100% at getting a runner in from third base with less than two outs. Two and two the count. And that's in the dirt. So Michael's able to work the count full. He is trying to get Torino's home. And he's also trying to get on board with just one out here in the third. Shinsu Chu in the top of the order for the Rangers. Waits to be next. You can be at bat with a man on first and third and one out and have a 2 2 pitch where well, you can't take a close pitch. And if this pitcher like Gibson yesterday has a really good sinker, not much you can do. Michael Joyce uh, swinging in an afterthought as he recognized that pitch a little late. And he has gone on strikes. They're now two down. You take a look at it from behind the pitcher. It's a breaking ball that. I think Michael either wasn't looking for or thought was going to stay inside and then late as it got toward him he realized how it was breaking and that it was going to catch the inside corner and tried to make some contact and just wasn't able to do it. Go two gone now. Shinsu Chu was called out on strikes on a 3 2 pitch in the first inning He takes inside for ball one. Just getting back to that last situation first and third one out. 2 2 pitch. Your plan is to hit the ball in the air. But if the pitcher throws you a 92 mile an hour sinker down right around at the knees, you yeah. can't take it. You've got to swing at it. And it's not that easy to hit that ball in the air. Yep. So have a plan, but then hope you've got the skill to execute it and the pitch to execute it. Yeah, I would say that. The if a guy has that kind of sinker, you got to make sure you don't get 2 2 on it. <laughs> yeah. You know, you get something earlier in the back. get something earlier in the count, I guess. <laughs> now, Chu now down in the count. The ball and two strikes. Chu in Chu his last three ball games, you can see a 500 hitter. On six for 12. He has uh, shown signs of life getting back to that leadoff spot. Call strike three, second time in a row. And Jimenez has gotten the strike call. On two, Rangers can't do anything with a leadoff double. They strand a runner after two and a half, four nothing, Orioles. Texas Rangers baseball on Fox Sports Southwest is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Find Southwest Airlines fares online only at southwest.com. And by the all-new Mazda 3 with seamless connectivity. We'll look at the Inner Harbor here in Baltimore. A great vacation destination for a lot of uh, folks from the East Coast. 
out on Utah Street. The umbrellas are popping out and Boots Barbecue and whatever else is out there. Seems like it changes about every year. It's some staples that uh, are there year in and year out. Great place to visit when you come to Baltimore. Joe Saunders wouldn't think it's a great place to visit right about now. He's trying to settle things down. He's given up four runs on uh, three home runs and a walk in the first couple of innings. He will face the middle third of the order. Adam Jones, Chris Davis, and Delman Young here in the third. Well, generally, Joe would enjoy pitching against the Orioles. He's 7-0 career-wise against the Orioles. Chopper up the middle. Elvis has it, but has no play as Jones with very good speed. Able to leg that out. And Adam Jones swinging at the first pitch is now two for two. A leadoff single here in the third inning. Well, that's exactly what Joe's trying to do. Make the ball sink. Keep the ball down and away and get a softly hit ground ball. Unfortunately, he did that, but it wasn't hit in a spot in the infield where any infielder could make a play on it. So five hits now for the Orioles. They've had their leadoff man aboard in all three innings. Here's Chris Davis who went down swinging in the first inning. He takes a fastball for strike one. Chris hitting at 212. 13 home runs, 41 RBI. Saunders a check of Jones at first. You can tell the swings that Chris is taking right now and the pitches that he's swinging at. He is just kind of in a funk. He's not picking the ball up. He's almost starting his swing before the pitcher lets go of the ball and throw him a pitch in the spot he's looking at. He's going to have some success, but otherwise he's just not able to have the back control to lay off anything close. Now the 0-2. You see a guy start to, I call it, cheat a little bit on that on that pitch. Is that from getting jammed, or you think you have to go to the head of that up? That's what I. That's used to happen to me. Yeah, I, mean, I think you should do the exact opposite. Good hitters don't change. You know, you jam them, they hit a little blooper down foul to the other side of the field, and a hitter like me would come back and say, "I got to open up quicker. I got to try to pull the ball this time." But good hitters just stay with the same approach. Davis got that off the end of the bat a little bit. It's a lazy fly ball out to right field for out number one. And I keep going back to Ted Williams, but Ted Williams used to say all the time, a good hitter should never be afraid of getting jammed. Uh -huh. I wasn't afraid of getting jammed. Just hurt my hand so much. <laughs> I didn't want to. I didn't want to do it. <laughs> that would hit Chris right off the end of the bat. No one out. Jones remaining at first base. Here's Delman Young who grounded out to second to end the Oriole first. And the reality is, I guess for for even major league pitchers, they may make a really good pitch on you and jam you and you foul it off, and they've made a good pitch, but nothing really bad has happened. It's just a foul ball, and chances are they're not going to be able to throw the next pitch right there anyway. So keep your same approach. Keep working and eventually get a pitch that you can handle. That's kind of what happened to Adam Jones his first time up. He didn't get much to hit at. He kept plugging away, fouled off some tough pitches, and then got one and hit it out of the ballpark. Odor tries to finish off the double play and can't quite do it with Delvin Young getting down that line pretty well. Beltre had to back up before he could start that with the long hop. The force play removes Jones, are now two outs. Young at first for J.J. Hardy. Much you could do to turn a double play, although Rubnet hangs right in there against a strong runner, bearing down on him and sliding right into him. Watch the little guy stands right in there and somehow gets his feet around the slide and has something on his throw to first base. So no fear on that play. No, not at all. He's not bailing out. Toss to first, Delman Young is back. He knows that runner's right on top of him. He stays right there. And get something on the throw. So many times you see that second baseman, and I don't blame him, bailing away in a little sailor to first base that bounces halfway to first base. He's stuck right in there with Adam Jones. Yeah. Bearing right down on him. Luke had uh, used the bag, too, to defend the, for the runner. He yeah. Put the bag between himself 
And where Adam Jones was sliding, so that Jones would have to slide over the bag to get to him. That's a pretty he smart play. Wouldn't have stopped Hal McRae. No, <laughs> no, he was going to roll over it. But actually, Matt wouldn't have slid until he got past the bag. Anyway. <laughs> one ball and one strike the count to J.J. Hardy, who homered his first time up. A solo blast leading off the second inning. Delman Young at first. Saunders back to the plate. Good breaking ball there. And we'll take you back to the beginning of the second inning. J.J. Hardy against Cole Saunders. What's that sound you don't like? That, it? Did I ever tell you I hate that sound? Yeah, a couple <laughs> times. We got most of that. that his second home run of the year. He's now driven in 20. Try the one two pitch again. Well, Saunders now approaching 70 pitches for the ball game. Delman Young stepping his lead off the of first base. That breaking ball settles just a bit low for a 2 2 count. One of the reasons Ted Williams said he would, a good hitter shouldn't be afraid to get jammed. He was very, very big proponent of using a bat you could handle. We mentioned choking up the other day so that you could wait that last possible instant before you committed your swim. And a better idea of what type of pitch it, it was and where it was going to be. And what you're talking about was cheating. Hitters starting a little bit too soon. You make your commitment before you really know. What kind of a pitch it is and where it's going to be, and then you see those wild kind of swings. But the good hitters, the really good hitters, have that kind of back and forth. Just seem to be able to wait a little bit longer. If they are jammed, it just doesn't enter into their mind in a negative way. It's just you know, it's just part of the at bat. All of a sudden, you make some big alteration because you fouled the ball off the handle. It might keep you from hitting the ball good. The next good pitch you get to hit. Pretty well hit to center, but this is going to stay in the ballpark. Leonis Martin over to his left. Makes the catch, and that'll do it. Now the leadoff single is wasted by the Orioles. We have finished three at Oriole Park in Camden Yards. Baltimore four, Texas nothing. They join millions of players now and the only official home run derby mobile game from MLB.com. You square off against your friends from around the world live in multiplayer derby mode and climb to the top of the leaderboards. Download today for the free, for free on the uh, Apple App Store and Google Play. Home run derby mobile game. 
Elvis Andrews leading things off for the Rangers here in the top of the fourth inning. Texas trailing Baltimore 4 0. Elvis had a base hit to uh, right field his first time up. Takes a Jimenez breaking ball a little bit low for ball one. Elvis now with that average back up to 270. Ahead in the count, 2 0. Jimenez had a big year in 2010. That was when he went 19 and 8 with Colorado. He went to the Indians. The Indians acquired him to be their ace, be their number one starter. Struggled for a while, but then put it together pretty well last year and went 13 and 9. The Orioles are hoping this year that he does the same thing he did last year, and that's pitched very, very well after the All-Star break. Second half of the year, he's one of the best pitchers in the league. A little bit of a struggle for him first half, but if he can do what he did in the second half again this year, they'll be pretty happy in the pennant race. Menace has come back to even the count to Elvis, two and two. And call strike three. Elvis walking away, and Jimenez with his fifth strikeout, one gone in the fourth. And let's sit down and uh, check in with Emily Jones again, yeah? Guys, as you well know, the Rangers in the midst of 20 games in 20 days. Carlos Pena says it's important not to look too far down the road during a stretch like this. The more you start looking ahead, you get tired before you even play those games. So it's more like, what can I do to feel good today, to be ready for my team today? And then tomorrow's not guaranteed, you know, if you think about it. So it's more like when tomorrow comes, all right, today. And when the next day comes, okay, today. So you just pretty much focusing on the press, and it's the best way to go when you have those long stretch you know, of games in a row. That's, that's the way to go. 13 after tonight, of course, guys, leading into the All-Star break. Yeah, very, very sage advice. That was. That's about as well yep. as you could say it right there. Sure that was perfect. You get 16, 17 years in the big leagues. <laughs> Carlos Benya has seen a lot of it. Uh, he figured a lot of these things out. That's great. We haven't had a chance to get to know Carlos that well, even though he was a former Ranger way back when, but not sure what his career path might, where it might take him when he's done playing, but... I wouldn't mind having a manager that came up and talked to me that way. Yeah. Well, two gone after Pena grounded out. And, uh, Adrian Beltre. You know, smashed a third that was taken care of by Chris Davis his first time up. And a chopper in the hole. This one's cut off by Davis. That'll do it. Rangers gone in order. Six straight now. Sent down by Ubaldo Jimenez with an eight pitch. Fourth inning. On to the fifth we go, 4-0 Baltimore. Watch Chevy Hometown Kids every Saturday morning at 10 o'clock right here on Fox Sports Southwest. Where it's not about the score, it's about the experience. And the Orioles come to bat here in the bottom of the fourth inning. It'll be Jonathan Scope to start things off, followed by Caleb Joseph and 
moved in back to the top of the order for Nick Markakis. Scope popped out to second base his first time at the plate. Orioles with four runs on five hits. The first pitch from Joe Saunders is high and away for ball one. Second baseman hitting at 217. Out of play, way down the right side. One and one the count. Jay Darcy is at the game. He's from Haslett, Texas. He'd like to say hello to his daughter Val and his grandson Camden. Haslett. Scope a leadoff single. So four straight innings. Orioles have had their leadoff man aboard. Hit number six. That brings up Ghost. Ran that fastball in on the fist. Scope was able to still hit it well enough to get it into center field. Wasn't what you call a ringing line drive. But definitely counts as a base hit. It looked like one of those in the morning. Sure it will. Ground balls turn a double play right here. Out for the pitch count. It was at 73 pitches right now in the fourth inning. Gabriel Joseph had a base hit to center back in the second. He was checking down with the third base coach Bobby Dickerson to see what Buck Scholder might have in mind here in the fourth inning. First pitch to him was off the outside corner for ball one. By inning breakdown, more the first and second inning, nearly 60 pitches in those two frames. Third inning kind of calmed down a bit, but 14. But you're right, Tom. That double play would uh, go a long way to helping the pitch count here. Two and nothing to count. That base hit for Caleb Joseph. His last time up snapped an 0 for 8 that he had brought into the game. Saunders a check the first. The ball pretty well hit the right center field. Going back as Rios. He's at the track right in front of the wall out there. Makes the catch. And back to first. His scope. Caleb Joseph gave that a pretty good ride to Rams right center field. Number one. He's only hitting 160 coming into the game, but he has hit a couple of home runs. That one a little bit of a scare as it went toward the 373 sign out right center field. Very, very little breeze here tonight in Baltimore. What breeze there is is yeah, drifting out toward center field. One gone, now back to the top of the order. Nick Marcake is up for the third time in four innings. Marcake has been aboard both times at once via a walk and really an error on Elvis Andrews. The first pitch to him is ball one. Two ninety-seven the average for Marcake. Saunders check scope at first. And this is going outside. Two and up. Okay. Fans that uh, enjoy our pitch tracker feature, we don't have that tonight. Sorry about that. It's uh, under the weather. If you were looking for that, he's not with us this evening. We'll hope you uh, get it out of the emergency room and have it for you tomorrow. Drive the left right there is Shinsu Chu. He captured it. Back to first to scope. There are now two outs. And Steve Pierce will come up. First baseman, number 28, Steve Pierce. has an 0 for 2. So Saunders will deal with Pierce, who had the first inning two run home run. Last time up here, sky to center field. Pierce started the season going 0 for 17 and was released on the 27th, re signed with the uh, Orioles on the 29th. Back there now and playing well. He has had 
the opportunity. Takes the first pitch inside for ball one. The home run for Pierce is eighth of the year. It's 23 runs driven in. One all pitch. Not two and up. Gus Honor's last inning in the third seemed like he was able to settle down a bit and get ahead of the hitters better. In this inning, he's kind of gotten behind the three hitters that he's faced, the four hitters that he's faced so far. Has one on and two out. And we'll drive scope back with a throw. Carlos Pena holding the bag against Jonathan Scope at first base. And that pitch just nipples at the inside corner for a strike. Two and one to Pierce. Another one of those pitches has not necessarily been where the glove was, where he intended it to go, but it was a decent part of the plate anywhere where Pierce wasn't able to take a good swing at it. Now the 2 1. That's hit high in the air to deep left field. Chu is back. He is at the wall. It is gone. Pierce with his second two run homer of the night, and the Orioles lead it 6 to nothing. Both of the last two pitches, on both of the last two pitches, Robinson Chirinos set up on the outside part of the plate. That was glove on the low outside part of the plate. The pitch before the home run was all the way on the inside part of the plate for a strike. This one cuts right back to the middle of the plate, and instead of being a well-located pitch and maybe a swing and a miss, a ground ball, a foul ball, cuts back to the middle of the plate, turns into the second home run for Pierce. This is a very Homer friendly ballpark. You can tell why. Joe Saunders saying, why, why me? Kelly Cruz takes the next pitch low. It's two balls, no strikes. Four home runs now for the Orioles tonight. This is the second game in Joe Saunders' long career that he has allowed four home runs. Two of them this evening by Steve Pierce. Both of them two run shots. Great feeling for Steve Pierce. He's again 30 years old. He's played for a long time. He's had parts of a number of seasons in the big leagues. But he's never enjoyed the same kind of success that he's having right now for a team that's only a game and a half out of first place. Now Mike Maddox out to the hill to uh, talk with his beleaguered battery of uh, Joe Saunders and Robinson Torinos. Kelly Cruz. Drew the two out walk. Continue the inning. There was some stirring going on in the uh, Ranger bullpen, but nothing happening uh, imminently. I think Todd Washington would love to see Saunders get through this inning and one more at least. Yeah, definitely. Get through, get him through five innings, but it's been a struggle for Joe here tonight. 88 pitches thus far. But he will have to work to Adam Jones with Cruz at first and two away in the fourth inning. Well, ben Rowan and Sean Tollison are well rested, but if you use them for a couple of innings apiece today, then they're probably not as available for tomorrow. Scott Baker is the long man, but he threw 90 pitches three days ago. Four days ago, I guess it was. Trying to avoid using him as well. Jones, a ground ball to third. Beltway knocks it down, recovers, throws low. And off the bag to make the play is Pena, but everybody's safe. I would imagine that's going to be an error on Adrian Beltre as he was in a hurry to try and nail the speedy Adam Jones at first and threw wildly. Well, he made a good recovery and got rid of it quickly. And Carlos Pena makes a spectacular try 
to catch the ball with a runner right on top of him. He's leaning into the runner to try to catch that ball, keep his foot on the bag, and keep from getting creamed by Adams jo Adam Jones running past the bag at first base. So he didn't accomplish it. He couldn't keep his foot on the bag. He did catch the ball, but pretty athletic move to catch and avoid the runner like that. Well, that extends the inning and it gives Chris Davis a chance to hit with runners at first and second and two outs. Davis 0 for 2 tonight. He struck out in the first, fly to right. His last time up, the Rangers have a big shift going for Davis with Luke Ned Odor a good 50 feet out in the shallow right field. 0 and 1 the count. Good fastball right down through there. Looks like Chris Davis now is in between thinking. Uh, you know, Behind the fastball ahead of the breaking ball, and that's not a good spot to be. Yeah, when you're when you're taking the strikes and swinging at the ones outside the strike zone, that's that's a bad rut to be in. And that pitch just off the outer edge. One and two. Career-wise, against his former club, Chris Davis hitting just 185, but he has a couple of home runs. Got Cruz at second, Jones at first, the one two pitch. Line to right, but that's right where Rugnet Odor is stationed. Boy, when you're struggling, that's what happens. Sinking line drive, that'll do it. But the Orioles come up with two more runs on uh, two hits, an error, and a walk. On to the fifth, 6 0 Baltimore. Fans America's new sports network is the place to turn before every slam, every goal, and every game with America's pregame weeknights at 5 p.m. only on Fox Sports 1 and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Well, the Orioles leading 6 to nothing here in game one of this four-game series. Alex Rios will start things off against Dubaldo Jimenez here in the Ranger fifth inning. Rios takes ball one. Alex struck out in the second inning. Jimenez has struck out five tonight. He's allowed just two hits. Elvis Andrews had a single in the first. And a double by Robinson Torinos leading off the fourth. Or the third. And that has been it. A ball and a strike to Rios. Jimenez. Tom told you walks have been a real problem for the 30 year old right hander but not tonight. And he gets Rios for the second time this evening that is strikeout number six. Take a look at that last pitch he's thrown some good sliders in this game and there's another good fastball that he sinks on the inside corner. Yeah, he had a four game stretch right before his last start where he averaged five walks a start over four starts. 
He leads the major leagues in walks coming into this game. And the Rangers catch him on a night where he hasn't walked a batter. It's not like the Rangers in every batter swinging at every pitch he throws on right. the strike zone. They've actually, especially Chu, have taken some fairly close pitches that have looked like borderline pitches and they've all been called strikes. Mm -hmm. It's just one of those nights where, for whatever reason, Jimenez is throwing strikes. That's something he's been accustomed to doing this year. He throws one here on the 2 0 pitch and Jonas Martin taking it all the way. Martino for one, a fly ball to center his first time up there. Jimenez working fairly quickly here and it's the outside corner with strike two. The angular right hander back to the plate. High and tight. A full count. Julianos Martin you know, is trying to get aboard with one out here in the fifth inning. Robinson Torinos, who was the last Ranger to reach base, is waiting in the on deck circle. Payoff pitch is fouled away and we'll try it again. The Orioles felt like they had a good group of position players, the kind of offensive players that could contend. They also played good defense. They were worried about their pitching. So after Jimenez won 13 games for the Indians last year as a free agent, they signed him to a free agent contract, a four year contract, the longest contract they've ever given a pitcher. So they need him to come through. Yeah, there's the first walk of the game. Leonis Martin draws the pass. He is aboard with one out. Robinson Chirinos now will come to the plate. Chirinos. Hit one into the gap in right center field his first time up and initially was signaled out trying to stretch that into a double. But on appeal, that call was overturned and Torinos was granted the two base hit. And we'll take you back to it in the third inning. Uh, it was a good challenge, a very close play. After seeing it about 10 times, we felt like he was safe. We weren't sure that it would be overturned, but it was. Robinson ended up with a double. Unfortunately for the Rangers and for Torinos, he didn't get any further than third base in that inning. The Rangers were not able to uh, get him across the plate. Ron Washington still has a challenge, considering the uh, the one he issued was not used up because of the uh, call being overturned. In the air to right field, backing up Marquez next to the warning track. He stopped, puts it away. That is out number two. And the owners Martin back to first. And now Rubnet Odor will come up. Waldo Jimenez had a, uh, a year in 2010 with the Colorado Rockies. He was just outstanding. He threw a, a no hitter. First uh, Rocky pitcher ever to, to do that. He's also third in the National League in uh, the Cy Young voting. Uh, that's saying something. You have guys like Kurt Schilling, who won it that year, as a matter of fact, in front of him, and that was it. Odor rounded out to first. He takes low for ball one. Let's uh, say hello again to Emily Jones, Em. Eh? Rubnet Odor, the youngest player in Major League Baseball, and learning on the fly here in the big leagues. Here's what he says so far. Just the same baseball. In minor leagues to here, but here everything is like more professional, you know. Everything is like almost perfect, and this is the different here. Rugnet told me that it's just different when you're taking your your lumps and your licks here at the big league level than when you do it at the minor league level, especially at such a young age like 20, um, as he is. But you can see he's responding in a very positive manner as far as the way he's handled himself uh, on and off the field. All right, Emily, thank you. Well, we would agree with that, and he has handled himself exceptionally well mm -hmm. for a very young player with very little experience at the higher levels of minor league baseball. I don't think you could ask for him to come up and do any more than he's done. He's, he talked about how professional it is at the big league level. He's handled it professionally himself. Yep. He's looked like a professional. Sure the runners at the corners after Odor's single. Two outs, Michael Choice. Who went down swinging his first time? He's uh, up there now, an opportunity. 
to get the Rangers on the board. And two guys, one more thing on Ruben Odor, taking great pride in, in learning English and really wanted to do the interview in English today and has really been working on that. So as someone who um, is challenged with uh, talking to these guys in the clubhouse, I appreciate that for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Good for him. Joyce, a chopper deep behind third. Long throw is not in time. Well, it was in time, but it pulled Pierce off the bag. Well, everybody's safe in to score. Leonis Martin. The Rangers are on the board. We'll see how that's ruled. And uh, Buck Showalter coming out of the dugout. And he's going to go down and talk to Las Diaz, the first base umpire who made the call. The, uh, the call was that Steve Pierce was off the bag, accepting that throw. If the play stands, it'll be ruled an error on Chris Davis. Chris has got a strong arm. Oh, boy. Yeah, Buck Showalter, even after seeing that replay, uh, his replay uh, folks said, no, you don't need to challenge that. It's closer than I thought it was. I didn't think it was even close. No, no RBI for Michael Choice, but the Rangers do get on the board. Error by Chris Davis, the first committed by the Orioles tonight. It's now a 6-1 to one Baltimore lead, and Shin Su Chu up there with a chance to do some more two-out damage. 0-1 on the foul ball. He's off the fucking so. Challenge that one. Yeah. Well, it looks like his foot's on the bag. Second baseman scope on to uh, second for the force. That'll do it. Rangers do get a run. A hit, a walk, and an error. Two left. Halfway through the ball game, six to one, Ori. Continue the series tomorrow night right here at Oriole Park in Camden Yards. Nick Martinez, we know, will pitch for the Rangers. We don't know who's going to pitch for Baltimore as of yet. But uh, there will be somebody out there. But Joe Walter will find an arm to go out to the mound. The Rangers uh, conclude this series here on Thursday. And then three in uh, City Field in New York against the Mets before coming back home. Well, they had talked about whether or not they would call someone up to start. Or whether they would use one of the men in the bullpen. They've got eight guys in the bullpen. TJ McFarland, one of their left handers, was speculated as a possible starter, although certainly not a perfect choice. He's not really stretched out to start. Buck is probably hoping that 
Menes pitches seven, eight, or nine innings in this game so that he can use the whole bullpen. He needs to right. Delman Young starting off the Orioles' fifth inning and has uh, fouled off a couple of pitches. He's down in the count, 0 and 2. Young 0 for 2 tonight. He has grounded out twice and he's gone on strikes here. And Joe Saunders drops in that breaking ball. One gone for Saunders, his second strikeout of the night. That's what he's trying to do with that breaking ball way ahead in the count like he was is throw it, make it tempting enough to get him to swing and far enough away and out of the zone that if he does, he won't hit it. Now, J.J. Hardy will come up. Sorry. That's okay. I'm just saying he accomplished what he tried to do. Hardy takes strike one. J.J. solo home run in the second inning. This time up fly to center. One ball and one strike. Hardy part of this uh, defense in Baltimore that's second in the American League. He's always been a very, very steady shortstop. Gold glove winner. All-star at the position. 2-1 pitch. Joe Saunders just passing the uh, 100 pitch plateau. Some more stirring out of the uh, Ranger bullpen, but nobody actively throwing at this point. Two balls, two strikes. Now a 3 2 count. Long look in. And the left hander winds the payoff pitch. Hit number eight for the Orioles. Hardy has his second hit of the night. One on, one out. Donovan Scope coming up. Let's head back for a Mazda game break with Dana Larson. Dana. Dana, thank you. Scope the hitter, one for two tonight. First ball swing, drives one to right field. Going back is Rios. He's at the wall. It's off the top of the wall. Being held at third is J.J. Hardy, and Jonathan Scope really driving the ball over Rios' head for a one-out double. I've seen a number of balls hit to right field today that looked like they were hit pretty well. And the right fielders or center fielder was able to run down at the warning track, but this one was hit on the line. He got the good part of the bat on it and lined it over Alex's head. Alex couldn't get back to catch this ball as it goes off the top of the wall. Very well hit ball by Scope. Well, that didn't miss by much for going out. No, not much at all. It's that where the wall drops down from 21 feet and where the scoreboard is down to 7 feet. Probably hit about six feet above ground level. That's what it looked like. So the Rangers now with runners in second and third playing the infield all the way in with Caleb jo uh, Joseph, the catcher up there. The first pitch is inside for ball one. Joseph a single in two trips. Little crowd trying to get behind their hometown team, the Ranger infield. All four of them at the cut of the grass. Saunders with runners at second and third, working from the stretch. Drops in that slow hook. It's one and one. You can imagine this spot with, uh, with Joseph being a right-handed hitter in first base open that he might be a little bit careful, or at least trying to work him over pretty well. Yeah. Left-handed hitting Marquecas up next. Ball is 
rifle foul down the third base side. But the count moves to one and two. J.J. Hardy, the runner at third. Bobby Dickerson, the third base coach, uh, saying something to J.J. At second base, Jonathan Scope and Sean Tollison up and throwing in the Ranger bullpen. His uh, pitch count has gotten up to 107 for Joe Saunders. Which would kind of lead you to believe that Phil Saunders would not face Steve Pierce in this thing no matter what. <laughs> Considering Pierce has a couple of two run home runs against him. Yep. Yeah. Another bot, the out that he made was a sky high pop up to center field, but he looked like he had some good wood on him. You know? Maddox, the Ranger pitching coach, right there at the top step, keeping a very close eye on Joe Saunders. Two and two the count. Try it again. Joseph had a second inning single to center field. Last time up, five to right. Orioles so far six runs on nine hits. Well, Saunders trying to keep this at a five run deficit. Left hander okays the sign. Looper to right. Getting himself in position to make the throw is Rios. Here comes Hardy. The throw to the plate is not in time. Hardy slides in ahead of the tag attempt by Torino's on the third go scope and the sacrifice fly by Caleb Joseph makes it a seven to one Baltimore lead. So Rangers have been un unable to do with the last few chances they've had with a man on third in less than two outs is put the ball in the air to the outfield and I think that's an easy run. Driving in his eighth run of the year. And now with scope at third and two outs, be Nick Markakis to face Joe Saunders. 0 and 1. Kakis, a 296 average. Tonight he has walked, been on by an error. Last time up, he lined to left field. One ball and one strike. Donovan Scope, the runner at third. Check swing. That breaking ball is just off the outside corner. Two and one. And Joe Saunders now. Uh, for Ron Washington's club, a season high 113 pitches. Previous high had been 110 time before last. A little cue shot down the belfry and loves it. And on to first, that will do it. Let the Orioles uh, get the run back that the Rangers played it in the top of the fifth. A run on two hits, one left. We're going to the sixth, 7 1, Baltimore.
Sonic Slam Inning brought to you by Sonic. Tonight's jackpot is worth $400 and dinner for two at Sonic Drive-In. Tonight, the Rangers are hitting for Linda Kelly from Farmer's Branch. And if a Ranger hits a grand slam this inning, Linda Kelly from Farmer's Branch will win $25,000. You can register at any participating Sonic restaurant. Elvis Andrews, Carlos Pena, and Adrian Beltre, the first three Rangers to do the swinging against uh, Ubaldo Jimenez. He has allowed a run, an unearned run, to the Rangers on just three hits. A walk and uh, six strikeouts tonight for the tall right-hander. Elvis one for two. Take strike one. Budweiser pitching line for Ubaldo Jimenez tonight. Just three hits, five innings of work. One walk, six strikeouts. He has Elvis Andrews down on the count now. No balls and two strikes. Rangers still with the second best road average in the American League. They're second to, uh, to Baltimore. 269, the overall team average. And that's one of the reasons why the Rangers have played just a couple of games under 500 on the road this year. And Elvis Andrews hitting well of late on the road. Chops that one down to first, and Pierce will take it to the bag ahead of Elvis. One out. Next will be Carlos Pena. First baseman, number 21, Carlos Pena, fly ball to left, a ground ball to first this evening. So with those two at-bats against Jimenez, Carlos Pena now 0 for 13 in his career against Ubaldo Jimenez. Had no success whatsoever. First pitch to him. It's just off the outside corner. Pena starting his seventh game. All the games since he was called up from Round Rock last week. Started every ball game at first base for the club. One ball, one strike. About, or I should say Jimenez about ready to throw his 85th pitch of the night. And a little pop-up shallow center field coming on is Jones and Adam Jones on the dead run. It's a catch about knee high. Well, he wondered if he was going to get to it, but I think he knew he had that ball all the way. He had it gauged. You know how hard he had to run where he wanted to catch it. Oh, two outs and Adrian Beltre coming up. That leads us to our uh, Ford leaderboard for you. The average against Baltimore this year. You see uh, Adrian Beltre second to Milwaukee's Chris Davis. Beltre hitting at 583 against the Birds. Andrew McCutcheon, Michael Bourne both at uh, 500 or above. Beltre 0 for 2 tonight and he takes a breaking ball for strike one. Average now for the season at 329. Base is empty, two away here in the sixth inning. Baltimore on top, 7 1. Didn't quite wait long enough to pull the trigger on that breaking ball. Saunders on the Ranger bench. Beltre drives on to right center field. It is up the alley and one hop into the seats. A ground rule double for Beltre. 
Well, Adrian giving that a pretty good ride to the right center field alley, and that's twice now in the last couple of games. We have seen Adrian do that. Well, definitely when Adrian is in a good streak, he's using the whole field and driving a lot of balls to right field and right center field. That's a great example of it right there. Hitting the ball on the good part of the bat, driving it to the deepest part of the ballpark out there in right center field. Seen a little number of balls out of the ballpark to right field too. That's not the deepest part of the ballpark. The deepest part of the ballpark is 410 in left center field. Well, Beltre with the fourth hit of the night off of Jimenez. He's at second with two outs. Alex Rios, the hitter. The first pitch is high for ball one. Rios has struck out both times. He has faced Jimenez tonight. Struck out swinging in the second and called in the fifth. Foul ball straight back over the screen. And it evens the count now at one and one. Rios waiting. The men is a check of second. The chopper to third. Davis throw across. Plenty of time to get Rios. Rangers are gone to six. They couldn't do anything with Beltre's two out double. Five and a half in the book, seven to one, Baltimore. On Fox Sports Southwest is brought to you by your Texas Ford dealers. Take the EcoBoost Challenge to see why Ford is the best in Texas. A very comfortable evening here at Oriole Park in Camden Yards, in the inner harbor of Baltimore. Brad on hand is uh, seeing their Baltimore Orioles drive Joe Saunders from the game after five innings. He gives way. The 26-year-old right-hander Sean Tallis. Yeah, good numbers for Sean. This will be his 33rd ball game. He's had a little bit of rest lately. He was getting a lot of work. Rangers were going to the bullpen frequently. In the Minnesota series, the starters pitched fairly deep into the ball game and allowed Sean to get a little bit of rest. Here he is back out going for his 33rd appearance. Opponents are only hitting 225 against him. And Sean had uh, five days off since his last outing against the Tigers. He will face Steve Pierce, the first baseman, who is two for three tonight, a pair of two run home runs off Joe Saunders. He's the main thorn in the Joe Saunders' side tonight. Now hitting 331 with nine home runs and 25 RBI. Pitch from Tollison down and away. It's two balls, no strikes. Pierce, Cruz, and Jones, the three right handers, to face John Tollison here in the sixth inning.
the 2-0 pitch. And that is popped up a mile high up there, shallow center. Leonis Martin calling off Elvis Andrews, and he makes the catch. I'm sure Elvis is probably pretty glad he called him off, too. Yeah, that had some hang time. On it. Pierce has hit a couple of home runs to left field, and he's hit a couple of sky-high pop-ups to center field. The one out here in the sixth. Now Nelson Cruz will come up. Cruz 0 for 2 with a walk. Now he at 282. And Tollison's first pitch to him. He's grounded to short. Elvis up, throwing, all in rhythm. And that is out number two. Next will be Adam Jones. Nice to see the Rangers going to take care of Cruz in his first game. <laughs> As hot as he has been in the see, first uh, half. Do the same thing that Ian did to us. Yeah, exactly. Although, you know, you don't want to see it happen against us, but when those kind of guys have been in the organization as long as they've been in the organization and meant as much to the franchise, you can't wish them bad luck after they leave the team. You don't want them to do well against the Rangers, though, but you wish them to have strong careers and be happy wherever they go. I'm glad now he's having a big year. Just don't do it against yeah, us. Yeah, do it against somebody else. Yeah. <laughs> Adam Jones takes the first pitch down and away for ball one. Jones two out of three tonight. Solo home run and a single to shortstop. And that pitch low and outside. It's two and nothing. It's also reached via an error. I mean, Beltre committing an error on the last ball that uh, Adam Jones hit. Thomason with that shoulder high set. Up the end of the bat, fouled over toward the first base dugout of the Baltimore Orioles. Two balls and a strike. Yeah, that's one of those you probably is wise to go out and check. That's going to do that. Lucero out there and Ron Washington out to uh, check with Robinson Chirinos. Just got to give him a chance to take a couple of deep breaths and answer your questions and make sure there isn't any possibility of a concussion. And we've seen so many times this year and last year as concussions have been something that people are very concerned about keeping a close eye on where mm -hmm. players, a lot of catchers have had to go on that seven day disabled list because of a concussion. Glad to see Robinson smiling. Hope it's not going to be the same thing for him. Just makes you wonder. In the old days, when the masks weren't half as good as they are now, and people weren't concerned about concussions, those balls were hitting them in the face just as hard as they are now. Yeah. How many catchers and umpires just went on and umpired the game, caught the game after having had a concussion, just right. like the football players used to do. Yep. Get back in there. Yeah, I don't. I don't know that I can ever remember concussion coming up. No, as a possibility. No. And yet you just have to think if catchers now get concussions because of foul tips, they had to be getting sure. before and just playing through. It. <laughs> you know, the horror stories that all the, not all, but many of the football players are talking about that happened years and years ago. Probably still do. The things that happen to them dur during a game and having to go back in the game and risking it happen again. Mm -hmm. two, two pitch low and inside. The count has now gone full to Adam Jones. Well, Jones hitting fourth. If he gets aboard to extend this sixth inning, Chris Davis would be up there swinging against Sean Thomas. Dawson ready. The payoff pitch is on the way. Lost him. A cut fastball running way outside. Close enough. Jones to offer at it. There's a rare walk. The tenth walk for Adam Jones this year. And 300 plate appearances. I think he 
Could have got him to swing at it if it was just a little bit closer. But even Adam Jones wasn't going to reach for that one. A one on two out. Chris Davis stepped to the plate over three tonight. Struck out, fly to right, in line to second. When I say line to second, he actually lined to medium right field. That's where uh, Luke Nettle Gore is playing. In the old days, you hit that ball and you were certain that was a base hit to right field for an RBI. Nowadays, with the shift, you can't be too certain that's going to happen when you hit the ball. Well, I guess you know it because you look out there and see where they're playing. I would say it feels like a base hit when you hit it. Yeah. Right? I would bet Chris Davis thought double when he hit that <laughs> where he hit it. Now that's going to wall. Yeah. Nope. The guy there in front of it. Owen won the count. Now one and one. And Tolleson, the Allen native, a 26 year old. Baylor X. Working here trying to shut down this sixth inning. Change up. One and two. Here's uh, Chris Davis. Spray chart of his hits. Now if you were to throw the uh, round balls in there, you'd have about three times that many on the right side. They actually play him around toward left field in the outfield. Uh -huh. Dawson ready. The one two is coming. And that evens the count. Cruz has hit some amazing home runs. You, you watch some of the replays and you watch the swing of the pitch that's way outside and he just kind of reaches for it and makes a little bit of contact. And then you watch it, you go, that's a home run, and they carry out to left field. That tremendous power that way. Yep. Chops that one foul. A real long swing, and he's tremendously strong. His hands and forearms yeah. are really strong. And he makes solid contact. That ball jumps. And even this year, he's hitting around 210, striking out a lot, but he still has 13 home runs. He's knocked in 41 runs. It's not a complete disaster. Not approaching what he's done last year or even the year before for the Orioles. Still have to be careful with him, though. Sure do. Fouls that one off to the left. The count remains even. After he left the Rangers, his first full season with the Orioles in 2012, he hit a solid 270 with 33 home runs and 85 runs batted in. And I think everybody said, well, there, there's the kind of season Chris is capable of having. When he came out last year and hit 53 home runs and knocked in 138 runs, hit over 40 doubles. This year, it's kind of like the season he was having before the Rangers traded him. Kind of back to that mode. Kind of battle through it. Get back to the success he had last year. He's battling here against Sean Thomas. Two balls, two strikes. Got him swinging. Well, that'll do it for the Orioles. They get a Runner on a walk, but strand him. We're going to the seventh. Oreo seven, Rangers one.
AT&T. Uber's Rewind will show you how it happened. Steve Pierce in the first inning, a two-run blast. Adam Jones followed with a solo. J.J. Hardy left the yard. And there's that man Pierce again. Another two-run blast. All those off Joe Saunders. Four home runs tonight. That ties a career high issued by Joe Saunders in our four-game summary. Of the Baltimore scoring early and often. They have scored in four of the six game, or innings that we have played here tonight. They lead 7-1. to one. Martin, uh, on an error, scored the only Ranger run that came in the fifth inning. And Leonis Martin leading off the seventh. Against Dubaldo Jimenez, who fires a strike in there. It's nothing in one. Leonis walked to get aboard in that fifth inning. miss there. And the count is nothing at two. The minutes tonight has struck out six. Has only had the one walk. Doesn't figure that you have a good game where uh, when you've been walking a lot of people, the one walk you give up coming around to score. And he gets the one of our team to go with a high outside fastball. Strikeout number seven. One away. And Robinson Torino's coming out. Well, the Rangers play the third of a four-game series against the Angels on Saturday. That's July 12th. It's also a chance to celebrate Eric Nadell's win of the 2014 Ford Frick Award. And the first 15,000 fans, 14 and over, will get an Eric Nadell bobblehead with a recording of his iconic call of the play that sent the Rangers to their first World Series. And that's courtesy of Mito Tires, USA. Tickets are available at TexasRangers.com or by calling 972 Rangers. All the Ranger fans can sit back and uh, recall, even in your mind today, the uh, call of. And the Rangers are going to the World Series after the strike three called against Alex Rodriguez by Neptali Feliz. That has to go down as. If not the biggest, one of the top three biggest roars in our ballpark. Yep. That was, that was just amazing to be there for that. There was so much electricity. Well, that series and, and the Detroit, uh, Detroit Tiger series and next year were just things at that ballpark that haven't been, hadn't been seen before. During this round for sure, that's out in the proof. And hopefully we'll see him there again here pretty soon. I'm not sure there's any way you can top there the first time that it happened. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Beating the that was, Yankees that in that great. series? Yeah. And ben Rowan loosening in the uh, Ranger pen. So the people that Tom told you have been uh, rested a little bit out there. Tollison and Rowan. We've been talking about Jimenez and how he's struggled so much this year. A couple of areas he hasn't struggled though. He, he's 0 and 6 with a 6.28 ERA at home, so he's not pitched at home like he's pitching tonight. But he's pitched well. This is an unusual one. He's pitched well at night. In 11 starts at night, he's got a 2.84 ERA. In five starts during the day, it's 10.55. So he's gotten blasted during the day. He's, pit, he's pitched really well in 11 starts at night. Maybe he's not a morning person. He must not like getting up in the morning. <laughs> Doesn't eat breakfast. I can sympathize with that. <laughs> Here's a guy that's leading the major leagues in walks that I wouldn't say he's had precise control tonight, but he's only walked one batter. He struck out seven. And in the past, he's had good success against the Rangers. He's three and two in seven starts with a 2.83 ERA against the Rangers coming in. He's pitching well at night and against the Rangers. Mm -hmm. Two things he's done well. But he's throwing a lot of strikes. Mixing up his pitches well. Looked like he got into a groove. 102 pitches, 63 of them for strikes tonight. And the pitch just barely fouled off by Rugnet Odor. We'll try it again at two and two. Odor singled his last time out. One for two tonight. With just four hits off of Jimenez through the first six and two thirds. That's in the dirt, bounding into home plate. And uh, Caleb Joseph, I'm not sure he's real pleased he got in front of that one. That, uh, that 
a little bit of his bare arm up there. Let the full count to Odor. Pay off pitch coming. Try it again. Rangers four here in Baltimore. Then on to uh, the Big Apple where they visit City Field for the first time. On the Mets over the weekend. Chopper on the right side. Pierce underhands to him. Then is covered. And Odor is retired. Rangers out in order. It's stretch time in Baltimore. The Orioles seven and the Rangers one. Pitching change here. We'll show you tonight's AT&T fan photo. And our selection tonight is from Scotty. Oh, there's the one of those uh, boomsticks out at the ballpark. That Scotty is uh, preparing. I'm assuming that's Scotty preparing to enjoy. That looks like a 36-inch Louisville <laughs> slugger right there. <laughs> Scotty, appreciate you tweeting that. If you folks would like to uh, tweet yours in, maybe we could. Get one on the air for you. We'll have one each night in our Fox Sports Southwest telecast. Hashtag Southwest Fan Photo. Well, ben Rowan has come out of the Ranger bullpen to take over here in the bottom of the seventh inning. The sixth game for Ben. Getting his feet wet at the big league level and doing a pretty nice job. Six innings. Strikeout per inning, only one walk. Working hard trying to establish himself as a setup reliever in the big leagues. Good pedigree in the minor leagues. He had to earn his way here every step of the way. Every level that he could pitch at, he had to be successful. He was. Here he's in the big leagues trying to do the same thing. The first pitch to Delman Young is a little bit high for ball one. Young 0 for 3, a couple of ground outs and a strikeout tonight. Making ball slips wide. He hits 2 and nothing. Ben worked uh, in yesterday's ball, but just a third of an inning. He threw four pitches against the Twins. Line to left center field. That is down for a base hit. Able to cut it off is Leonis Martin and safely aboard with a leadoff single, Delman Young and JJ Hardy coming up before he steps in and sit back for a Mazda game break with Dana Larson. Dana. All right, Dana, thank you. Jake Arietta is that? lighting it up, boy. Yeah. Arietta originally was with the Orioles and uh, 
He's found a home in Chicago. They may, they may wish he was still here. Every time I look up, the box score says seven innings, three hits, no runs. Yeah. Product of uh, the PCU Horn Frost, sir. 0 oh 2, the count to J.J. Hardy. Hardy is 2 for 3 tonight, a home run and a single. He has scored twice, driven in one. Frisbee of a breaking ball just darts off the outside corner. 1 and 2 to Hardy. Delman Young, the runner at first. Rowan checks it. Fouled straight down, and we'll try it again in a ball and two strikes. Torino's <laughs> not happy he didn't catch that, but very thankful he didn't get another one off the mask. <laughs> 25 year old Ben Rowan to the step. Just missed the outside corner. It's two and two now. Orioles seven runs on ten hits tonight. Andrews a run on four hits. Hardy checking his swing. The pitch outside. It's now a full count. Coming with just about mound height. Chad Bradford used to scrape his hand occasionally. Yeah. He would get so low. To reset and try it again at three and two. Yeah, I don't remember. I, I know he had a few good years when he was with the A's. Uh -huh. He was he was good against the league. I, I can't remember what he did against the Rangers. I have to take your word for it. Another three-two. That's outside. Ball four. So a single now a walk. And Orioles had their first two hitters aboard. And that will bring up Jonathan Scope. And Mike Maddox out to uh, have a chat with. Ben Rowan and uh, Robinson Torinos. Carlos Pena joining in the conference on the mound. Well, we have a moment here. We'd like to remind all the Baylor fans that uh, Fox Sports Southwest wants you to show your school spirit in a Texas Rangers game. You get discounted tickets for the Friday, July 11th game against the Angels. And the first 1,000 fans receive a Rangers cap and Baylor green and gold cover. Covers. Go to TexasRangers.com slash Baylor for details. One of the university days. One of the Baylor Bear fans out there. Conference concluded. Here's Jonathan Scope, who is two for three tonight. He has singled and doubled. He has scored once. That's Delman Young at second, J.J. Hardy at first, and nobody out in the seventh inning. Ben Rowan. There's that sinking fastball in for strike one. Rowan, a product of Southern California, on here facing the Orioles. Young single, Hardy walked. 0 1 pitch. Ben Rowan played junior hockey in the LA area too. Ball is shot foul down the third baseline. One and two. Now let's go. Ben was a defenseman for the LA Junior Kings hockey team for wait four years. High and tight, and the count evens at two and two. In 
field play and scope a couple of steps around to the left. But that will play depth to uh, Elvis Andrews and Rubenet Odor. Outfield just about straight away for the young second baseman. Orioles so far against Rowan look like they've been able to uh, decipher what he's done. They haven't had a lot of awkward looking swings. No, they haven't. Them. They haven't. They, they foul off a lot of pitches. Another 2 2 is coming. That was a little bit of an awkward swing, but he didn't, didn't cause him any problems because he was able to spoil the pitch and follow it off. And takes a little bit off this pitch. Way out in front of it, just barely ticked it off the end of the bat, but hung tough. Good to see another pitch right here. Right hander is ready. Got him swinging. There's what you're talking about. Yeah, Frisbee got going away and uh, Scope couldn't stop himself. Rowan gets strikeout number one. Now Caleb Joseph will come up. Got him to chase that high slider. Unusual angle makes the ball kind of go up and away, which is an angle you never see a pitch in the big league or anywhere else that matter. A guy throwing overhand, you can't make a ball do that unless you throw it from <laughs> down there. Might see it in softball. Yeah, that's, that's why baseball players can't hit fast pitch softball that's right. pitchers. Of course, no one else can hit them either. Fast pitch softball hitters can't hit them either. We were in Oakland one day way back when in the 70s, and they were having the national fast pitch softball tournament. Mm -hmm. and we had an off night, and for some reason we went out and sat right behind home plate and watched two ball games. I can't remember the pitcher's name, but one of the pitchers was supposedly the best pitcher in the world. And the first game went 11 or 12 innings. Nobody scored. Almost every play was a strikeout. Occasionally a guy would put a ball in play. Occasionally they try to bunt. But you watched it and you just couldn't imagine anyone. I don't care if it was a big league player or not ever making contact sure. with the stuff that this guy was doing. Into the hole, Elvis goes to second. They get the force there, back to first, and they complete a 6 4 3 double play. Nicely turned by Elvis and Lugnet Odor. Side retired, no runs a hit, one man left. After 7 7 1, Baltimore. Here at the top of the eighth, 7 1 Orioles on top as we welcome you back to Oriole Park at Camden Yard. And the good news for the Rangers is they get to try this one all over again tomorrow as Nick Martinez takes the mound. Adrian Beltre with his 395 average in June. We'll see what he can do in July. Obviously, Adam Jones swinging a hot bat against these Rangers as well. Of course, we get things started at 6 o'clock on Fox Sports Southwest. This, of course, brought to you by AT&T U-verse TV, gentlemen. It might be too bold to call for a comeback here, but um, why not? I'll try it. I'll okay. give it a try. Whoa, here it goes. 
Here goes. Here goes right, nothing, good. fellas. Good. Okay, good yes. shot, Em. I did, I did guarantee the win Thursday going into Friday, I believe. You're playing with house money right I now. I am. I am. <laughs> Listen, you only live once. That's right. Might as well live bold. <laughs> you know, if, you, if you're wrong, people are going to forget it. If you're right, you'll never let them forget it. So go for it. Michael Choi starting off the uh, Ranger eighth inning. It'll be Joyce, Chu, and Andrews to face Ubaldo Amenez, who is over 105 pitches now. It's up to 108. He starts this uh, eighth inning. Choice tonight, 0 for 2, has struck out and reached on an error. That error back in the fifth inning is now the Rangers scored. The Jonas Martin was on third and the error was committed. He tried at home. Three balls, no strikes, the count. Now three and one. Menace to the wind. And Joyce to right center field. Adam Jones gliding over to his left. That is out number one. Well, Michael Joyce makes the U-turn, heads back to the Ranger dugout, 0 for 3 tonight. And back to the top of the order, Shin Su Chu, who also is 0 for 3, he is coming to the plate. And glancing down at all the games that Jimenez has pitched this year, quickly, it looks like the longest he's pitched coming into the night was 7 and a third, so that's where he is right now. Yep. Trying to make it his longest outing of the year. Rangers aren't seeing the wild version of the Menez. They're seeing a pretty good version of him tonight. A guy that's used all his pitches and made a lot of good pitches. Ryan Webb, the right hander, throwing uh, in the Baltimore bullpen. Underhand by Pierce to Jimenez cover. And two gone. Elvis Andrews coming up. Rangers really haven't squared up a whole lot of balls tonight off of uh, Baldo Jimenez. A lot of hard hit balls. Chirinos yeah. got the ball hard in the gap in right center field, and Adrian Beltre. Odor had a fairly good line to hit the right. Ball pretty hard. Oh, you're right. There had not been a lot of hard hit balls tonight. Brief visit to the mound by uh, both Chris Davis, the third baseman, and uh, Caleb Joseph, the catcher. Elvis, a first inning single. One for three. Also had a strikeout and a ground out. Ball one. A breaking ball. And Elvis able to check his swing in time. It's two balls and no strikes. Jimenez mentioned just two and eight this year. Six in this ballpark. And fly ball softly hit out to center. Adam Jones makes the grab. That will do it. So three up, three down. That is seven straight now. Set down by Jimenez. Bottom of the eighth inning coming up. It's the Orioles seven and the Rangers one on Fox Sports Southwest.
Southwest. It gives fans a chance to camp out in the outfield at Globe Live Park. That's on July 3rd. Participants will be treated to game coverage, a patriotic fireworks show, and a whole lot more. This is TexasRangers.com slash sleepover for tickets. Baldo Jimenez uh, breaking out the, the moves in the dugout of the Orioles. He is apparently finished for the evening. Eight uh, innings of uh, very solid work by Jimenez tonight. Yeah, it's probably his best outing of the year. Eight innings, only one walk. Put it together tonight. Had a great game. I don't blame him for feeling good about it. Well, Scott Baker now has come out of the uh, Ranger bullpen to Work in the ninth inning, or eighth inning, I should say. I'm sorry. Well, Scott's numbers on the season; those numbers are deceptive, though. He's been a lot more valuable than a 5.95 ERA might indicate. Yeah, a number of times he's gone out there and just saved the bullpen with five to six innings of solid work. He's given up some home runs. That's what's caused his ERA to be high. But he's gotten the job done a number of times when the Rangers needed it. Baker, you remember last time out, six and two thirds innings of uh, relief that really saved the Ranger bullpen. I mean, without that, the Rangers would have been forced to ball up one, if not more, relief pitchers. In the ball game that took over in the uh, third inning, worked the rest of the ball game. Working here to Nick Martakis. Martakis. 0 for 3 tonight. And a walk back in the first. Since then, he has been on via an error, lined out, and grounded out. Two one pitch, popped him up. Adrian Beltre through the coach's box on the third base side, makes the grab. That is out number one. Next will be Steve Pierce, the first baseman. Yeah. Well, we understand that uh, the no hitter by Jake Arrieta is a thing of the past. Broken up with two outs in the eighth inning up in Boston. Stephen Drew, who had uh, been 0 for 2 with a pair of strikeouts in that game, got his revenge. Uh, got the base hit that ended the no hit bid by Arietta. Well, our crack research crew in the truck informs us that no one has gone in to Fenway Park and pitched a no hitter in 56 years. Jim Bunning was the last one to do that in 1958. We came close. Steve Pierce inside, one ball and one strike. Pretty, pretty, pretty good company. Join Jim Bunning or something like that. Yeah. Oh. Rip and a miss with the off-speed pitch. Pierce tonight, two for four. Those two, though, have been two run home runs each. So, skied to center field twice. Baker's one two pitch. Right hander winds. The two two is going outside. Three balls and two strikes. Rangers sign. Scott Baker back on the uh, 28th of March. Minor league free agent. He had been with uh, the Mariners in spring training. He was released on the 25th. Andrews brought him aboard, then brought him up, then sent him back down. Had to have him go through waivers. He will hit the right field. Rios going back. He has room in front of that 373 mark. The catch and Pierce is retired. Two gone for Nelson Cruz. Scott 
Scott Baker out of Oklahoma State. 32 year old. He will deal with Nelson Cruz now, and Cruz 0 for 3 tonight with a walk. Grounded out three times, had that walk back in the fourth inning. He lines this one to right. Rios into the alley, makes the catch. Nice backhanded play. It's a 1 2 3 inning for Scott Baker. Rangers coming to bat in the ninth, trailing 7 to 1. Go to the uh, ninth inning. Duvaldo Amenez is indeed uh, finished for tonight. That is uh, eight innings, four hits, one run, no earned runs, one walk, seven strikeouts. Best outing of the year for Duvaldo Amenez. Ramirez is the new pitcher for the Orioles. Now to uh, take over in the night for the Rangers, Carlos Pena, Adrian Beltre, and Alex Rios. Brian Flaherty is in the ball game now at third base with Chris Davis moving across the diamond. He will take over at first. Clarity at third. And Davis over at first. And Carlos Pena will start things off. Pena 0 for 3. A couple of flyouts and a ground out. First pitch from Ramirez is in for strike one. Carlos Pena now and three for 25 in a Ranger uniform this time around. One ball and one strike. Tired of waiting, he backs out. Ramon Ramirez 
the newest addition to the uh, Baltimore staff brought up from uh, AAA just today. Pretty good change up right there at 84 miles an hour. Something off his fastball. And really tailed away and down. Fooled Carlos had him out in front of it. A ball and two strikes the count. Orioles now have gone into an overshift with Ramirez the advantage in the count. The pitch in the dirt. Orioles now with the. Uh, Three infielders on the right side of the infield. Flaherty, the only player left on the left side. The 2 2 pitch. Got him swinging. Well, that's a very deceptive offering that Ramon Ramirez puts up there. Yeah, pretty good stuff. Some excellent change ups. Looks like another one right there. That ball really drops down. And a good change of speed and a good delivery with it, too. Really makes it look like a fastball when it leaves his hand. Well, Carlos Pena gone one out here in the ninth inning. And Adrian Beltre, who doubled his last time up, will stand in. 1 0. Oh. Beltre. Back up to where he began tonight with the 322 average. Now two and nothing. And we mentioned uh, the Rangers will have Nick Martinez on the hill tomorrow night at six o'clock Texas time start. Then in game three it'll be Nick Tepish and the right-hander Chris Tillman for the Orioles. Pitch outside to Belfry. It's three and nothing. Then on Thursday night, Yu Darvish takes the hill against Wei Yin Chen. For Baltimore, Chen, the uh, left-hander, comes in at seven and three. Darvish at eight and four. And Adrian Beltre draws a one-out walk here in the ninth inning. That's just the uh, second walk issued by Oriole pitching tonight. One on one out for Alex Rios, who is 0 for 3. Rios struck out the first two times that he faced Ubaldo Jimenez, and last time up, grounded out to third. You can see the average at 301 for Rios. Takes a strike from Ramirez. Foul just by Gary Pettis, the Ranger third base coach, and down the left field line. Nothing in two now. Beltre not being held on at first. Ramirez to the plate. Call strike three. Rios is frozen at home plate. Ramirez, and that is out number two. That's an unusual game for Alex. That's the third time that he struck out in this game, and he just wasn't ready for, for that pitch. So he's trying to throw it on the outside corner, tail back toward the middle of the plate. Alex, Alex knew that was strike three. Alex now nine for his last 59. And Luis Martin, the last hope for the Rangers tonight. Martino for two with a walk. He has scored the only Ranger run that came back in the fifth inning. High and outside. One ball and one strike. Ramirez back to the plate. The first Pierce underhands to Ramirez covering, and that will do it. Well, the Orioles thoroughly dominating the Rangers tonight. They scored three in the first and went from there. In the final, a seven to one Oriole thrashing of the Rangers in game one of this four game set. 
Bucks. Joe Walters' team uh, snapped their mini two-game losing streak. They won their 20th ball game at home in uh, 41 tries. The Rangers dropped to 19 and 22 on the road. Well, seven to one in the final. We will take a timeout. We'll be right back to Oriole Park and Camden Yards after this on Fox Sports Southwest.